dear viewers of St. Martin, first of all, let me take this opportunity to wish you all a prosperous 1988, and I hope that this new year will bring you good health and happiness. At this moment, I personally wish to address myself to you on the very serious political developments on our island that will affect us all for times to come and which therefore have to be taken very seriously as the Lieutenant government, Governor also stated in his very impressive New Year's speech. I hereby explicitly declare that as of for now, I do not address myself to you in representation of any political party, any religious denomination, or on behalf of any organization whatsoever. Neither do I at this moment have any political ambitions. Also, I do wish to emphasize that my speech does not bear the least intention to embarrass, hurt, or otherwise offend any particular person, a person, or any section of people within our community. However, on the other hand, I do wish to be crystal clear in that I feel that as a concerned native of this country, I have certain specific moral obligations and commitments to my people. Based on this, for me, sacred consideration, I feel the time has come to speak out on the present situation. My name is Leopold James, and I was born on this island 44 years ago, lived 20 years in the Netherlands, where I studied and worked in several capacities. I have obtained a doctorate in biology in the Netherlands. Living so long abroad has offered me the opportunity to be exposed to many different educational, social, and political systems, and also to the functioning of the democratic machinery in Europe. Consequently, I've been able to learn to develop my own lines of thought and a rational way of thinking. I also hold the principle that it is a God-given privilege for every individual to be able to express his or her opinion without fear of being harassed or otherwise intimidated. Also, in the greatest democracy of all, the United States of America, the freedom of speech is guaranteed in the impressive work, works called the Constitution. What I say here to you today, and more so, the reactions to my speech by governments and others will confirm whether or not there exists democracy in St. Martin 225 years after the abolition of slavery. Over the last, say, 10 years, St. Martin has gone through an uncontrolled, rapid, and dramatic development. Practically all these changes resulted in the increase of, interior, of material wealth. In principle, there was no attention given towards the raising of our social religious consciousness, which should also be an integral part of man's existence. To say the least, this leads to a very unbalanced and negative state of affairs in a country. This total lack of morality has a price and has created a unique situation on St. Martin, which is also very frightening. While we indulge in materialism, there is, on the other hand, so much decadence, so much immorality and crime, that out of fear for burglary, etc., it is becoming impossible to enjoy this wealth. Many of our youngsters do not know the meaning of the word respect and have totally lost contact with their own indigenous culture and history. This people leads to cultural genocide, the end of our own culture, our existence as a people. In most countries in which the government love and respect their own nationals, special efforts are always made to preserve its own culture. This is a policy that makes every country unique in its own way and makes it possible to distinguish one country from the other. Not so on St. Martin. Instead, we even import persons 
of questionable character and allow them to indoctrinate our entire nation via the radio with their cheap rubbish. This we call cultural indoctrination. A local would never be allowed to get rich on this basis. People, St. Martiners, where is our pride, our responsibility, our courage? Why do we always behave so submissive to all that is foreign, while on the other hand disrespecting and not supporting our own? As Mayor Albert Fleming so courageously stated in his historic speech on St. Martin's Day, 1987, we are doing our utmost, selling out all we have, our lands, our pride, our children's future, our very existence for the dollar, whose value is becoming slightly more than paper. And government, what are you doing to prevent this? We are actually prostituting ourselves and our children's future. We allow ourselves to become foreigners in our own country, and that all because of lack of pride, nationalism. Foreign merchants are allowed to expand at the expense of our own locals and to ship out the bulk of monies to their countries. So who is benefiting? We even allow obscure foreigners to get away with insulting the very wombs that bore us. It seems that St. Martins have become mentally paralyzed and completely apathic to what's going on in their very home. Where is the responsibility of our government, our church leaders, our teachers, our intellectuals, our union leaders, our social clubs? Why are we afraid to speak out on injustice and malice? All of us that are in responsible positions and know what's wrong will sooner or later be called upon to give an account to the people. Therefore, today, I hereby make my contribution to try to save St. Martin while it is still possible. So often we are told about this upswing we are supposed to be in and about the new hotels, etc., etc. Of course, this is all rhetoric, for we know all that St. Martin is crashing down on its natives. We are definitely not in charge of our own island, nor are we profiting the way we should. After hearing Claude talk about independence under these circumstances, I clearly realized that Claude is seriously out of touch and no more the leader he once was. His speech has created a tremendous fear among all the people and will create a situation of uncertainty for the most foreign and local investors. Claude, for a long time I admired you, your political genius, and was willing to support many of your ideas. But Claude, this time you are asking too much. Under no circumstance will, can or will I gamble my people's destiny out of personal frustration. This is absolutely absurd. The direction in which you aim to take this nation is one of sure totalitarianism and destruction and you know that. Claude, I personally give you very much credit for bringing St. Martin to its present economical level. No one can deny your great impact on the development of St. Martin. The many decorations your honor doctorate, they all speak clear language. But enough is enough, Claude. We should all be great and mature and realistic enough to realize that the law of nature, to realize that law of nature to which no one ever escapes. Claude, you have been St. Martin's greatest son so far, but now you are tarnishing that image and hurting our country, and most of all yourself. Be a real statesman, Claude. Go down in history as our most prominent son. Withdraw from politics now, and do not allow yourself to eventually be put aside as a pathetic old man by the events of history. 
do not use our destiny to your own personal ends and to settle accounts with others. Once more, Cloud, in the interest of our country, your family, the Democratic Party, and yourself make a grand exit now. I hereby also make a special appeal to all business people and investors that we would like to see you remain here for times to come. And we hope that we can come to good mutual understanding that would guarantee stability and continuity. Finally, I make a very special appeal to all Samaritans not to let this land be dragged into a brawl of destruction and darkness because of the personal vendetta and crusade of one person. This island's future is your business, is my business, is our business, and is not a private enterprise. We all know what the consequences will be if the wrong constitutional path is taken at the wrong time and with the wrong intentions. St. Martin will be devoured by struggle like we see in Suriname and Haiti and we do not need that. Claude will be gone and we will be left with the disaster. So it is up to us to say no to this sudden impromptu idea of total independence. Views, I thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.